She's gorgeous, isn't she? Italian styling and British brute force. Quite simply, the perfect combination. Welcome back to Collecting Cars, and today I'm looking at this Aston Martin DB4 Series 3. Simply stunning. The DB4 was unveiled at the 1958 Paris Motor Show with a completely new platform chassis, disc brakes all round and a new 3.7 litre six-cylinder engine. It was topped by a wonderful fast back body starred by Touring of Milan. The body frame is made up of a cage of small diameter tubes which is covered by handmade aluminium body panels. This method of construction is known as Super Leggera, Italian for super light, and was used under licence by Aston Martin Lagonda from touring right the way through to the DB6 Mark II in 1970. And that's why the DB4s, the DB5s and some DB6s have a pair of Super Leggera badges on their front bonnets. In fact, the DB4 was the first Aston Martin to wear the Super Leggera badging. Now, a series grouping was not actually devised by Aston Martin at all. It was the Aston Martin Owners Club who devised it as a way of tracking the evolution of the DB4. The Series 3 were the cars with chassis numbers between DB4601R to DB4765R. This car has engine number 637. Most of the updates from the previous series are hidden from view, such as the five windscreen demist events instead of three, twin bonnet stays and an electric tachometer. The principal external change is to the rear light clusters, which are the only really noticeable change in appearance from the earlier cars. Now instead of the cathedral lights of the earlier DB4s, the Series 3 has a polished chrome plate to house each of the lights. Another design aspect that really stands out on the DB4s is this gorgeous bonnet air scoop. And they are actually lowered on later cars on the DB5s, but these sit proud and aggressive, and you have the nice grills on the inside there. They look fantastic. Copies of the original documentation with the car show it left the factory in a lighter, elusive blue, and some of the paintwork is still visible if you look around the bodywork. Now, whilst the outside of the car has previously been repainted, inside is very original in here, and this dark blue leather has started to crack and patina really nicely. There's not a huge amount of space in the back of the DB4s, but it's a very comfy GT nonetheless. The DB5s, I think, had a slightly roomier space inside the cabin, but as a result, the back end of the car was slightly longer, so I think the profile of the DB4 looks even more sweeter for it. Right, that's enough chit-chat, let's fire her up. Oh well, no seatbelts then. Classic motoring at its best. At least it's warm in here because it has been bloody freezing outside. So I'm glad to get in here for two reasons. One, because I get to drive a fabulous DB4, but two, because it's nice and warm. Such an iconic look over the instrument binnacles. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Right, Let's see if I can get this a bit further forward. Is that gonna do anything? Oh well. It's as good as it's going to get, I'm afraid. Sounds absolutely wonderful from the get-go, this. Oh yeah, lovely. Four speed manual synchro mesh gearbox so it makes those changes nice and smoothly for you. Now, you don't want to do what Pierce Brosnan reportedly did in Goldeneye, and that's drove all the way around to the Monte Carlo Casino with the handbrake on. He forgot that down the right hand side here is the handbrake to these cars. He drove it all the way down through Monte Carlo and then wondered what the burning smell was. And that was in a DB5. Oh, what a nightmare. Question is, when you get a car like this, what are you gonna do with it? Are you going to restore it? 
Are you going to make it pristine in concourse? Are you going to go racing in it? It's lovely just to see these used and this one is very well worn in and it's got a real charm about it. It's lovely to have a car like that because you're not so worried about it. Of course it's a high valuable, beautiful, rare Aston Martin, but it has even more charm when it's been used and driven as it was intended to be. Sounds fantastic. You get occasional bangs from the engine when the air intake takes a big gulp of air as you're going along. Makes you jump actually. You don't have to be forceful with the gear change, but it's certainly got a very nice satisfying feeling when you sort of push it and lock it in. These Astons are just pure class, aren't they? I mean, there's nothing quite as cool as this just cruising around. When you see one, which is quite a rare sight, you wonder what it's like to drive or be sat inside. And I'm pleased to report that it is magnificent. It's a lovely interior in here. I just absolutely love the dark blue. It's aged very, very well. And then we've got these green carpets as well. They go very well together. If this was mine, I'd definitely be driving around with the window down all the time just to listen to the engine because it's so cool. It sounds so good. Ooh, not so keen on those lorries coming past though. Now it's always well worth going through a car's history file and this one for this DB4 does not disappoint. We've got the original workshop manual here. Um, we've got some service receipts. We've even got a previous owner's glasses in here. And what we've also found is that this was owned by a Hollywood star, Dawn Adams. Give her a Google, check her out. She was quite a star back in the 50s and clearly had very good taste in her motor vehicles. It's a dream come true to drive a car like this. It really is. I saw it on the site a few days ago, inquired as to whether I might be able to drive it. And fortunately, the owner let me take it out this afternoon and we've been able to do some filming with it and I'm so grateful because it really is a fantastic experience to get behind the wheel of something like a DB4. It's a very rare and privileged opportunity. Now this car is currently live on CollectingCars.com and is ready to be driven away, restored or prepared for some historic racing. Thanks for watching and see you soon.